alcance. ¿eh? Bueno, vamos a ver si el toque ha sido suficientemente leve como para que no haya dañado nada. Y mientras tanto vamos a seguir preocupados por lo que ocurre con Fernando, que en el primer parcial ha hecho 29-2. Sí, no, 29-2 Fernando... en el primer parcial. Fernando tiene Mira. gravísimos problemas. Mira, se ha pasado se aquí. No, 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 va, se ha pasado de frenada, algo le pasa. Podría tener problemas de freno. No, que la le toca también. No, Atención, vete. Le... The 2007 Japanese Grand Prix sparked the initiation of the Alonso Vettel rivalry. After the opening 19 laps under the safety car, a young Sebastian Vettel in a Toro Rosso rose rapidly from P6 to P3 and sat comfortably behind the McLaren duo of Hamilton and Alonso. After numerous crashes and drivers coming into the pits, the pair found themselves battling for P8. Due to the treacherous conditions, Alonso's mirrors fogged up and he unknowingly cut across the front end of Vettel's Toro Rosso and spun. After that day, the two locked horns in not one but two head-to-head -head battles for the title in 2010 and 2012. On both occasions, Sebastian prevailed, as well as completely dominating the 2011 and 2013 seasons. Fernando ran out of patience with Ferrari in 2014 and decided that he wanted out, opening the door to none other than the man who he'd battled for supremacy with for the past four years. When 2015 rolled around, it was Vettel who once again possessed the superior machinery, as Alonso had to endure three more years of pain in the infamous McLaren Honda. At the end of 2018, Fernando decided it was time to call it a day. Well, at least for the time being, before announcing his return to the sports for 2021. Meanwhile, Sebastian endured two very difficult years in Alonso's absence, with the 2020 being the worst in his entire 14-year career. With six world championships, 85 wins and 218 podiums between them, Sebastian Vettel and Fernando Alonso are two of the greatest drivers the sport has ever seen. But looking at their respective situations, will we see them hit the ground running and deal it out for midfield supremacy? So, before we discuss the drivers, I want to analyse how their respective teams will perform relative to each other this season. If we look at the points progression for both teams in 2020, we can see that Renault were only ever ahead of racing points in the Constructors' Championship at one point of the season, which was Imola. Before that, they went on a strong run, consistently closing the gap to their rivals with some incredibly strong performances from their lead driver Daniel Ricciardo. But ultimately, Racing Points had the better overall package and were able to finish the season ahead of the Enstone based team. This was in large part down to some superb driving from Checo Perez, who maximised everything out of his machinery in the second half of the season. Now, I know it's very cliche at this point, but most of you will be familiar with the term pink Mercedes being attributed to the RP20 as their chassis was pretty much a carbon copy of the Mercedes W10. For this, the team was punished with a fine of 400,000 euros, as well as being deducted 15 points in the Constructors' Championship. Now, even though copycat rules have been outlawed for 2021, the regulations will still allow Racing Point to upgrade their chassis to the W11 spec, as well as Mercedes's most impressive innovation from 2020, the race suspension. This also comes at a huge advantage of not having to spend two chassis development tokens allocated to the teams by the FIA. As for Alpine, they will be carrying a lot of momentum over after very encouraging signs of significant progress in 2020. A lot of credit for this must go to Ricardo's influence on the team's personnel, who felt motivated to live up to his expectations. Not only did his leadership and energy help elevate his peers, it also enabled them to unlock the full potential of the RS20 at low downfall circuits. The Honey Badger himself identified that a fundamental setup change made during Friday practice for the 70th anniversary Grand Prix helped Renault discover a sweet spot with the RS20. At certain races, particularly those that offered the opportunity to run a low downfall setup, Renault had the third fastest car. Their campaign for best of the rest in the constructors faded away towards the end of the season, but their mid-season resurgence was a massive positive. So realistically, 
I think we can all agree that Aston Martin will have a better car than Renault this season. Now let's discuss how the driver team relationships will play out for Vettel at Aston Martin and Alonso at Alpine. Fernando played a key role behind the scenes for Renault in 2020, offering invaluable feedback towards Renault's consistent improvements throughout the season. He was embedded within the team's weekend operations from relatively early on to help him get back up to speed in preparation for this season. However, it's worth noting that come the first race in Bahrain, yes, Australia has officially been postponed to late November. <sighs> God, I hope this season goes ahead as planned. Alonso will not have raced in a Formula 1 Grand Prix for three years. There is still an element of uncertainty with regards to his form and whether he will be as good or at least 80% of what he once was. However, looking at his lap times during the young driver test, I don't think his raw speed has worn off that much, if at all, and there is still a burning desire to make the most out of this project given his age and limited time left in the sport. It will also be important for Alpine, 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 Alpine. You're a donut! You're so stupid! You're so stupid! You're stupid! Dumb! To manage his expectations from the onset, because as we know, Alonso is very volatile in nature, and when things don't go his way, he tends to throw his toys out of the pram. However, spending those few years out of the sports may have helped him to appreciate the privilege of competing at the pinnacle of motorsports, which may have also helped him to shake off that toxic baggage as put by Cyril Abitbull. Speaking of Cyril, it was recently announced that he stepped down from his role as team principal, having played a major role in recruiting the two-time world champion. This decision came as a shock, but provides the team with an opportunity to restructure its management heading into the new regulations in 2022. The man set to replace the Frenchman is none other than Davide Brivio, a veteran in the motorcycling world and a key player in bringing Suzuki and Yamaha back to MotoGP glory. His impact will be felt in many ways. Not only will he help Alpine use its resources to greater effect, but he will also play a role in managing Alonso. For Sebastian, he will be looking to rediscover his ability at Aston Martin in what could be a legacy-defining career move. For anybody who has watched F1 for the past decade, you will know that Vettel is a driver who thrives on a car with a stable rear end. This bodes well going into Aston Martin as it is an easy car to drive and adapt to. Evidence from Nico Hülkenberg's feedback on the car for the first time at the British Grand Prix. Sebastian will be moving from the high-pressure political environment at Ferrari to an environment full of individuals who will support him and lift him up when he's down. And with that, we finally get on to the protagonists themselves. Alonso and Vettel have a rich history full of on-track battles that shaped the early 2010s. From 2010 to 2013, Alonso was the man driving the wheels off of his Ferrari, while Sebastian enjoyed the luxury of the formidable partnership that was himself and Adrian Newey. It's looking like a similar scenario will play out in 2021 as well, with Vettel possessing the better machinery than the Spaniard. However, we know that Fernando has this remarkable ability to drag spectacular results out of cars that don't deserve them. For example, his last F1 podium at the Hungarian Grand Prix back in 2014, where he managed to make a set of soft tyres, last 32 laps and almost beat Daniel Ricciardo to the win. Therefore, I think we can expect more of the same against Vettel and his other rivals in the midfield. As this year's midfield will be closer than ever, there will be very fine margins between each of the teams, giving the drivers the opportunity to make all the difference. This is where I feel the likes of Ricciardo, Leclerc, Alonso and Vettel will have the greatest impact and why I see the latter two dueling it out with each other all over again. Let me know what driver head-to-head -head you think will dominate 2021 and whether you think Alonso and Vettel will reignite their rivalry in the comment section below. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel if you're new to enjoy my latest videos in the future. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.